Hello guys and welcome to Le Mans Ultimate and a tutorial about the gameplay and graphic settings to have the best playing and user experience available right now. So we head into the settings tab. We're starting with the gameplay. Here you have the opportunity to um, save some presets and load some presets if you want to test different things. Generally speaking, what you're seeing here is um, a pretty much an eSport setup, so no driving aids on, just invulnerability on, just the auto clutch on, um, but anything else off. Either way, you can uh, adjust the difficulties or the um, driving aids that you want to have in the game, at least on the single player and also for the multiplayer as long as the servers allow. Uh, you can configure them up here, or if you have controls set up for these, uh, you can toggle them mid-drive. Um, hold brakes and hold clutch is important actually just for the start of the race when your car is getting spawned on a dummy grid. Um, I would recommend having them on. Same as the auto start engine, that means it doesn't have to flick the ignition on the starter switch every time, and the auto headlights. About the repeat shifts, um, that might be important if you ever face an issue where one of your shifters on your steering wheel gets wonky. I have put that to 150 milliseconds, which is like a long enough of a period without me like pulling too quick on the shifters and missing a shift. But it is also enough of the time uh, in order to really, if there is a circuit issue on, on the electronics, um, it is enough time to just have a single shift and not a double shift. Um, auto pit speed limiter can be useful that it automatically engages or disengages the pit limiter once you are at the line. Please note though, when you come into the pits, you still need to have pit speed limit um, because the car obviously is not getting just stopped at the line for 60 kph all the time. You have to manually slow down before that. On the AI, this is the strength that you set the AI to for your personal level. Here you can adjust their performance. So test out a little bit how the hypercars, how the GTEs, how the LMP2s, how quick they are compared to you. AI aggression determines the AI's racing style and overtaking behavior. So how much they are putting the nose in, how hard they fight against you, how much they defend and so on. And Interestingly, the limiter, that kind of defines the um, AI's field's performance range. Um, as in, if you have this on zero, all the hypercars, all the LMP2s, all the GTEs in theory are quite close to each other as they are all running in the same, in the same performance window. The more you put a limiter up here, the more spread they go. And that also could mean that you can raise different settings here. Um, while still not being either first or either last. On the network settings, uh, put the maximum network settings possible to not encounter any lag or any downstream or upstream issues during all racing online. Um, at least set this as high as your, um, as your internet connection allows. On to the graphics. Uh, the graphics are divided into two, three, three basic parts. We start with a display. I recommend running the game in full screen as a full screen pulls the least possible um, resources from the GPU. Also, I know that people that like uh, SimHub dashes and SimHub overlays or a race lab app or so, they wanna run it windowed and have the overlays above the Le Mans Ultimate screen, but, um, to my experience, this causes latency and input lag, so I would always recommend run your dashboards either on a second device, on a second monitor, on something else, but not above the screen being on borderless or windowed mode. Refresh rate, as good as your monitor can do it. Vertical sync, I have it always turned off. I think it also causes um, input lag and, and, and delays. Um, so I have it off. Post effects is pretty heavy on the GPU. Um, put it to low. FSAA is a good anti-aliasing. 4 is relatively strong. You can use 8 for screenshots. 
but nothing else. Eight times MSAA is really a killer on any GPU at the moment. Keep this to four, um, or alternatively use the FXAA, which is a less precise and less demanding anti-aliasing, but still kind of looks decent. Um, here you can select the HUD scale, whether you want to have it on a 1080p screen, or as you know, I have a ultra wide screen, so it is either like between the centered edge of a 1080p or at the very outside. If you go with wide, it's somewhere in the middle. If you go with full, it's on the very outside. Into the graphics and what you're seeing here is something that I can uh, use streaming and racing wise relatively easy. Um, depending on your own hardware, I have an Intel i9 12900K and an NVIDIA 3080 RTX. So I can use those settings to stream and drive and have relatively good and stable 144 hertz. I recommend, especially for people with less strong PCs, to have these on either high or medium. You can put a lot of filter and have those as slow as possible. These are also being referred as eSports settings as well. Again, I can run it on Ultra, thanks to my hardware, but find out what is suiting for you best. Down to the visuals, um, a little bit of an adjustment um, is possible with the visi uh, visible vehicles. So if you're encountering FPS issues due to too high settings up here, but you don't want to get rid of them, you have small adjustment possibilities with turning these down. Live TV displays just consume power from the GPU. I have them off. Um, those are personal settings, HUD enabled, obviously, virtual mirror enabled as well. This is a personal setting, vertical field of view. Um, we have done another video about how to set that correctly. And then we have lock horizon. So here you can decide whether your chassis is locked, which in the lock horizon off position, your chassis is locked and the entire environment around is moving. So if your car is bumping up and down, your track ahead of you is like going up and down as well. You can put this to low, then both shakes a little bit. Same with medium at high. I think it's only the chassis moving and the track you're going on is completely, completely fixed. Um, for the best immersion and for the best feeling, I would at least recommend off. For tracks like Sebring, low might be the way to go. Yeah, guys, that's it about the settings, about the gameplay settings. I hope as a beginner guide, this gets you a bit further and improves the usability and the gaming experience for you a little bit here. If you have appreciated the video, guys, please give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, ring the bell and enjoy Lamar Ultimate in the future.